Our message today is Offer the Cross, the fourth in a series of Lenten messages about the cross. The, the verse on the card is the last two verses that we will read from John 15. And so let me ask you to stand and let us read this word. Let me read this word for us from John. John is the author who writes the most about love. He is the last gospel written, and John had the most time with the Holy Spirit to kind of be taught what Jesus was about. So this is what he writes, quoting Jesus. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And greater love has no one than to lay down one's life for his friends. That's the heart of the gospel right there. We love because he first loved us. Love is the currency. Love is the change agent. Love is what our hearts hunger for. Love is how God created us. And so we're, we change tone. Honestly, the last three messages are tough. Take up your cross, endure the cross, and defend the cross. Those are some challenging things. We don't know what kind of crosses God will have for us to take up. These are the trials and challenges and assignments of life. Take them up, deny ourselves, take up your cross and follow me, Jesus says, and, and, and he brings us into very meaningful things, but not always easy, and generally they're not easy. Endure the cross was how in the world do we endure struggle and suffering? How did Jesus do it? For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame. So we look to God's vision for what he is doing through, the, through our struggle. And defending the cross, we realize there are other belief systems on this, in this world, other religions, that none of them have the Son of God. None of them have a sacrificing Savior who pays the sin debt. None. They're all based on works and trying to attain heaven yourself. Only in Christ do we realize we can never attain heaven ourselves. But he has attained it for us and given us the gift of forgiveness and eternal life. So we change tone on this fourth Sunday of Lent. It's warmer now, Jesus' love for us and his love for the people. And we get down to the nitty gritties. Uh, Sunday after next is Palm Sunday as Jesus comes into Jerusalem. Many people loved him and a few people hated him. And then we go to the cross itself on Good Friday. All right. Jesus deserves devoted followers. I think you would agree with me on that. He deserves devoted followers. The world needs to see devoted followers. They don't need to see lukewarm, wishy-washy Christians. We really don't make an impact. And thirdly, as I've come to know you all, you are devoted followers. You are. I hear, I see, I mean, we're not perfect, but I see us committed to Jesus and doing the things he wants us to do. I see the gospel spreading. I see love flowing. And that, that's very encouraging to a pastor, that the body of Christ is following their master. So the people see and they watch. So we come down to the whole reason for the cross, for God so loved for God so loved those who sinned against him. For God so loved us that he sent his one and only son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. God loves us. Even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Before we came to him, before we loved God, he loved us. It's an amazing belief and an amazing truth that God actually comes looking for us. 
The prodigal son parable in Luke 15 gives us that. Jesus taught it to us over and over. The the father is always looking, always watching for us to come home, always hoping we'll come home to him. And Oral has come home to God the Father and God the Son. Hallelujah. This kind of love is not easy to grasp. Our world has different definitions for love. But this is the purest love. It is a giving love. It's a kind of love that you want to give back. You want to. God doesn't have to make us. He may nudge us, but doesn't have to make us. This is my commandment that you love one another as I've loved you. Whole motive for the cross. And then the second passage, greater love is no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. Now we sang about uh, lay him down. We're talking about laying down our burdens at Jesus' cross, not us laying down our life. In this context, lay down one's life, Jesus is talking about giving your life, dying, dying. If you thought take up your cross was a hard sermon, lay down your life is a harder sermon. That's a harder thing to face. Lord, you want me to lay down my life? Yeah, if need be. Who would you lay down your life for? No one? Your spouse, your children, your country, your Lord? Who would you lay down your life for? Now, in practical terms today, we probably aren't going to be called to lay down our life, our physical whole life for God. Probably not today, probably not tomorrow. Maybe way in the future, if things really go astray in the world, and Revelation says it will. But today, let me suggest to you that there are daily opportunities to lay down part of your life. To lay down part of your life. Rick, could I get very literal with this? You lay down part of your life for somebody else. You took a kidney out of your side and you gave it to somebody else. That's a very short story for surgery and recovery. But Rick literally laid down part of his life for someone he didn't even know. Donated a kidney. He was led by God to do it. He had seen the effects of kidney failure and dialysis. He knew that and had a heart for that and gave a part of his life. Perfect. Perfect. This word lay down Atithamai in the Greek, it means lay down, but it can also mean place, or make, or offer, or ordain. Rick literally placed one of his kidneys in somebody else, placed it there for that person's benefit, and it's a tremendous benefit. This is, this is what's in the heart of our message today is laying down the parts of our life that we can lay down to serve uh, on purpose, um, to be placed. God will bring you to certain places for His purposes. And those, those of you who know that will experience that and say, yes, I was at that right place at the right time with the right words. Um, I'm mindful of Paula. There you are. Your surgery, you were, your place was moved. Surgery wasn't going to happen in Taylor County. It happened in Louisville. You were placed. God God takes care of this. Let me share with you someone who who lives out her life for Christ. Someone who offers the cross, lays down time and lays down talent, and I'll get into these points in a moment. But Thursday night, the Chuck Wagon Gang came here and did a concert, and they are a Southern Gospel group. They have been singing for 80 years. I mean, not all the singers. They're not 90. Uh, although our senior alto, Margie Coomer, was here at 92 years old. She sat here, and uh, our alto, and I didn't realize altos could take leads. I guess I need to listen to more Southern Gospel music, but altos can lead out, and the main person in the Chuck Wagon Gang was an alto. And she did lead a lot of songs. Her name was Shay. Not Shay Carter, not anymore anyway. Shay Smith. But Shay, how do I say this? She, as Jesus embodied the Father, she embodied her family. She embodied her, mostly her grandmother, Anna. Anna was the 
alto singer in the original Chuck Wagon Gang, and this goes before I was even born and before most of you were born. Oral, you probably remember the Chuck Wagon Gang. You know, you do, but the rest of us are like, who's that? Uh, Dad Carter was raised in the Dare County. They always used to come back and do a concert at the Dare County High School. Uh, some of you may have been at those concerts. Um, and to be honest with you, I heard they started singing cowboy songs. I don't know if it was Mama's Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up to Be Cowboys. I don't know if it was that one. Um, but the people, once in a while, they would sing a hymn. And then the people started asking, could you do that hymn? Could you do that hymn? And they shifted to singing gospel songs. They left behind the cowboy songs, started singing gospel songs. And here they are today, 80 years later, singing for the Lord. Is Anna singing? No, Anna must be in heaven. But her granddaughter is singing for the Lord. Shay is her granddaughter. We, all, we sat here, we heard the introductions, and this is Wyatt. He's a tall, skinny, 18-year-old bass singer. He's new to the group. And this is Carl. He's our guitar player. He's new to the group. And this is Melissa. She's from Texas. She raised her family now. She's back in the group. And this is Stan. He's from Knoxville. Been in the group 12 years. But none of them are family, except Shay. Shay and standing through Shay. This is Shay. She's the granddaughter of Anna. Ah, there's the connection. I mean, they are all good singers. But she was the family connection. She lived out the Chuck Wagon Gang. As we are called to live out the gospel of Jesus as Trinity family. How do you know a family? Well, you look at its members. Look at its members. Now, I'll be honest with you. Anna didn't come in warm and friendly, Wes, she didn't even talk to me. I talked to Stan, greeted the group at 3.30, they come in, mentioned to them if they want to use these nice Bose speakers, they'd be welcome to them, we could patch them in. Shay didn't talk to me, didn't greet me, didn't want to use our Bose speakers, and even in the prayer time before the concert, she was like, well, okay. And I say, they do this every night, if they need some space, I don't crowd them, I went in the office, did some work. You know, no problem. But it was in the singing when Shay opened up. When she began singing the songs of the Lord, she got comfortable. And then she really opened up. And then, by the end, not only the music was beautiful, very pretty music, it's the Lord's music, but I look at the people too, and I know you all look at the people. We all look at people. Are they really who they say they are, or are they just singing? Karen and I know a Southern gospel singer in Prestonsburg who went professional for a while, and he said, you know, some of these groups, they're not for real. You wouldn't believe some of the stuff you hear. He was for real, but he went off the road. He came off the road. He... But the Chuck Wagon Gang was real. Shay was real. By the end, she had opened up and relaxed, and then I saw she's the real thing. She's a Christian singing a family legacy for Jesus Christ offering the gospel, offering the cross. And toward the end, then I felt comfortable to take her picture. Michael, if you go to Shay's picture, this is a picture of Shay after the concert. She's exhausted, okay, but she's a good sport. So, Shay, can I take your picture? So, okay, this was the last thing. Okay, and she smiled, took her picture. And the next picture is the group singing, and look who's singing the lead. Look who's in the middle. It comes from her. And so I say that to lift up to you that if we offer Christ, people are going to look at us, they're going to see if we are believable, if they trust us, if they love us. Now, you know it took a while for her to win my trust, but now she has it, and I recommend them to you. People are the same way, and sometimes we may start a little cold or a little bristly, but inside, I know it's in there. Bring out the love bring out the warmth. And how can we do this? Let me give you three points. I need to wrap up because there's a beautiful song that ties this message together, and then Oral is going to be baptized, and then Donna wanted us to sing Oh Happy Day, so Donna went and got the music, and we'll do Oh Happy Day because we love you. All right, we'll do it. We'll do it. Three things. There's a lot more. You could add to this list. I just want to give you three. First, to lay down part of your life, lay down your time. Lay down your time. We talk about time management, on time, over time, no time, time in, time out. Time. 
This may be the most valuable resource today, time. You are giving your time to God to worship Him, to follow Him. He knows that, and He takes care of us. He blesses us back. There's nothing we can't give to God that He won't return it as a blessing. You know He will. Cynthia Coomer is not here today because she's with her niece, Nadine Darnell, who we prayed for. Or not her niece, her cousin. Nadine's been very sick. A very bad pneumonia infection. Already has serious diabetes. Cynthia, it's not easy for Cynthia to go to the hospital because she cares for Ben. So which way do you go? Do you care for Ben or do you care for Nadine? Cynthia works it out with people to help her. Many of the men gave their time to work on the Family Life Center floor. There'll be pictures in the newsletter of that floor taking up the tile, and women taking up the tiles, throwing them in the dumpster, uh, then grinding the floor, or first trying to get the glue off with acid, then, to, then grinding the floor. A lot of time given, people laying down their time. Connie has prepared new schedules, worker schedules, for our Wednesday night children's workers and our Sunday morning children's workers, as you all give time to care and raise our children and youth here in the church. And not only raise them, but protect them, keep them secure in what we're doing. That's valuable time. I could go on and on about the time that we give. That's part of laying down our life for our friends, for our older friends, for our younger friends, just as Jesus did. He gave his time to us. Thank you for your time. Karen and I went to a lawyer's office last Monday to check on a property deed, and we had questions but the lawyer wasn't available, so we went out. And then as we were finished, the person who was with him came out and said, oh, he's available now. And we went and talked to the lawyer. Talked to him face to face. And uh, these, are our, these are our questions, and he, he couldn't answer them all, but at least we set the tone for trying to get the answers. And at the end of that, I mean, I don't talk to lawyers often, but I did talk to him and I said, do I owe you anything? He said, no. And so I, I, we were glad, but we're happy to pay him for his time. That's valuable time. Time matters. So as we lay down our time, it's a way of showing people we love God, we love them, and God loves them. Hopefully we will be believable so God will be believable. That's the whole way the gospel goes out. We are as witnesses. Okay, second point is to lay down our treasure. Treasure is, is money, is wisdom, it's, it's possessions, it's talents, it's equipment, it's everything. The children laid down their treasure this morning. When they started clapping, I, I couldn't look up, I haven't memorized the song yet, but I hope you all are clapping with them. Karen says when they do that down the hall at choir rehearsal, they are wild things in there going, oh, wake within me, wake within me, and they go, they just love it. And so we asked them to help us lead the song. They, they just go to it. And if Kinley gets the girls and dances to it too, we just have a revival. A great time. That's their treasure, their freedom, their, their excitement. Wisdom treasures, service tre- strength treasures, muscles. Some of us have muscles and some of us don't. I'll tell you another little story on the Chuck Wagon Gang that made me believe that an 18-year-old skinny bass singer, and I related to him, Troy, when I was 18, I was as thin as he was, and I sang second bass, and that's what he did. I said, he he could do it. And the guitar player, Carl, Carl was a servant. He never sang. He never got a solo. He got introduced once, and then he played all the songs. They even sprung a song on him he didn't know, and after one time through it, he got it, so I complimented him. You, know, you, can tell, you can tell things about a group before and after when they set up and when they're themselves out of their outfits and everything. And these two guys were breaking down the equipment and they were packing it up. And, and Wyatt, the bass singer, was going to carry Carl's amp. The guitar amps aren't lightweight. They're heavy. And Carl said, no, no, Wyatt, here, you carry this lighter box of cables. I'll carry my amp. Man, that's heavy. These guys are servants. They're not just playing for the money. They are the real deal. So even as you give your treasure, it's a way to offer the cross, a way to offer Jesus. We give some financial treasure here, um, online, in the offering box, in the offering plates. We give, and, and God is worthy of it. The first part is His. 
But we as a church, we also give, we gave Agape House a donation last month. Sharon Payne was delighted. Saw her in the grocery store. Thank you all so much. We gave a donation to Joy Ministries. Heard from Maggie Coleman. Thank you all so much for that donation. We've given a donation to Second Chance Ministries and Methodist Homes locally. These are things right around here that help people. So we lay down our treasure not just here, but we give to ministries that are touching people and that they are able to offer the cross. Thirdly, and I I really got to go, is to lay down our talk. Lay down our talk. Place our words. Make our talk appropriate. It's not what goes into a man's mouth that makes him unclean. It's what comes out of a man's mouth or that what comes out makes him clean. Here's a string of scriptures about the tongue. Proverbs 21, 23. Whoever keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. Amen. That's a true statement. Proverbs 15, 4. A gentle tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. Ephesians 4, 29. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Do you hear the cross coming through? We're we're sacrificing what we'd really like to say, and we ask God, how can we really say it pleasantly and appropriately? I mean, there's times you're going to get angry. Don't get me wrong. Jesus got angry, but it's getting angry with the right words in the right way and handling it right. No corrupting talk, but uplifting talk. In Matthew 12, 36, this is sobering. Jesus says, I tell you on the day of judgment, people will give account for, for every careless word they speak. We will give account for every careless word we speak. And then lastly, Proverbs 17, 9, he who covers a transgression or a sin or an offense seeks love, but he who repeats a matter separates friends. In other words, repeating, someone did this to me, repeat over and over and over and over. You know, don't be doing that. When you cover that and you forgive them, you're covering that sin, and God works in that. It's love. Not easy, but it's love. Three things anyway. Lay down your time. Lay down your treasure. Lay down your talk. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. Easton, would you come and lay down your treasure of talent for us, uh, bringing Freddie and Karen and all those with you and Jax, whoever I think are going to sing love song. This song captures why Jesus came. To be with us, just to be with you. He came, gave himself. After this song, Oral, be ready, brother. You're up next for a holy moment. All right. Um, altars open if you're in need of prayer. Wes and Carmen kind of be around here. Um, God is always available to us.